Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be kind of taking our first looks and install of the Proof Research. Uh, this is their carbon fiber AR-10 barrel. It's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor and it's 20 inches long. So we're going to be installing it on our AR-10. This is also in 6.5 Creedmoor, but it currently has an 18 inch barrel on it right now. And I actually think this is the first time that this rifle has been on the channel. If you're interested in it, it is an American Defense receiver set. It's their UIC-10. Uh, receiver set with a 15 inch handguard. We're running the JP silent captured spring, uh, Radian Raptor charging handle, the SD version with the holes drilled in it, 45 degree talon safety, Trigger Tech Diamond, JP full mass operating system. For glass, we have the Razor HD Gen 2 with an 18 inch criterion barrel and a adjustable gas block. So I think it's the SLR Century 7. And we're going to be using a Century 8 on the, uh, on the proof research. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this rifle as it sits is absolutely hammering for me. I mean, even with cheap ammo, I'm grouping 0 0.5, 0 0.6 consistently. With my hand loads, I'm grouping again 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So I really don't want to fool with it. But the reason why we're swapping barrels is because pr prior to assembling this rifle, I was weighing out barrel length to velocity very heavy. And since I shoot suppressed almost all the time, especially on my AR-10s and or AR platform rifles, I really wanted to keep the package handy. So I did, or kind of small and maneuverable. I didn't want an extremely long barrel hanging out the end of my AR. If I was gonna run a 22 inch AR, I might as well just grab my bolt gun in 6.5 or 25 Creedmoor, or what, you name it. So I wanted to kind of keep a, a semi-compact package but the issue that I found is that I am right on the bleeding edge of the velocity that I need for this rifle. So again, that's why I said we're going to go with the 20 inch barrel. I have a few proof research barrels um, on some AR-15s like my Mark 12 and 6 Arc. I've got a proof barrel on my 22 and they've all shot really well for me so I have high hopes for it. And that's not to say the Criterion barrel isn't bad. I just need a 20 inch barrel. One other thing that I'm really excited on trying out the proof research barrel is the gas system. So it's a rifle length gas system plus two. This is just a rifle length gas system. So I think that that's going to help out from the research that I've done since 6.5 operates at a little bit higher pressures than 308. Doing a rifle length gas system plus two is kind of equivalent to a 308 with a rifle length gas system. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm I'm excited for that because when I'm loading a little bit hotter, uh, not over pressuring, but loading safely just a little bit on the hotter side, I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit of ejector swiping um, and I'm still well within my uh, within loading parameters, everything like that. We aren't over pressuring the cartridge. I'm really, really excited to try a longer gas system to hopefully mitigate some of those swipes, et cetera, stuff like that um, on hotter loads. So without uh, flapping our gums anymore, we are going to headspace this barrel real quick. We're going to disassemble the bolt, check the headspace, and then we will uh, start. This is all rock set on here. So we're going to boil this barrel, get everything off, get the barrel nut on, um, off, and then on the new barrel. And we will uh, we'll get the new proof on, see how it looks. So I wanted to kind of dive in what I meant by boiling my barrel and kind of a disclaimer before you get into it, uh, unless you're using your own pots and pans, make sure to run it by your wife or your girlfriend so they don't get crazy mad at you for boiling gun parts. Uh, it may save you a couple nights on the couch. <laughs> but anyways, kind of why we're doing this is, is I've applied a dab or two of rock set onto the muzzle threads before installing the muzzle device. Uh, so when we are removing our suppressor, the muzzle device doesn't back off uh, with the suppressor. That's never fun when that happens, so we want to make sure that that stays in place. And we've also put a dab or two of uh, rock set, actually one small drop on both of the threads on the uh, fasteners of the gas block. So what this does is, like we said, when, it get, when everything heats up, you want to make sure that those fasteners stay in place. If you use something like blue Loctite, if it gets too hot, it will start breaking down. So uh, I just use a quick dab. Again, you don't want to do too much. Everything is uh, appropriate in moderation. So just do a little dab so it won't back off overheat. 
So what we're gonna do is let this boil for about 30 minutes and our muzzle device and thread should come out with a lot less resistance than if we didn't do this. So we've got the barrel unboxed and on the bench right here. We've also got our bolt that we've completely disassembled here. If you can see, we've taken out the extractor. You can see in the extractor pocket, as well as we've removed the ejector to check our headspace. And just a heads up, if you are using a bolt that's been used in the past, this is a great time to kind of get in these extractor and ejector pockets, clean everything out. Also, look at your extractor, clean under the uh, claw right here and just make sure everything is good to go. Check your springs. So first things first, we're going to check with our go gauge here, and I'm going to open it over the uh, the blanket here so I don't drop it and, and mess anything up. You definitely don't want to drop these gauges. So go gauge, we are going to insert it and then check to see if everything moves. And as you can see, everything moves freely in here. We're good to go. So we've passed our go gauge. Now we will check our no-go gauge. So these are both Forrester gauges. We're gonna drop it right on in here. Put our bolt in. You see we can't chamber that. Our bolt lugs will not go into the barrel extension far enough to lock in place. So we've passed both tests, so we are good to go to get this thing installed on our rifle. So as y'all can see, the day kind of got away from us. Work picked up a pretty good bit in the afternoon. And as much as I would like to hang out and build guns all day, work pays the bills, work buys us our gun parts and cool stuff here. So they got the priority, but we were able to wrap this up kind of by the end of the evening tonight. And uh, I was gonna kind of do the whole install video on camera, but I decided against it because the video would be pretty long. But uh, one thing I'll say is if you're swapping a barrel, uh, make sure you're using the right tools, check your headspace, use the correct thread locking compounds, the correct anti-seize compounds, uh, time your muzzle device the right way if you are using a timeable muzzle device, but um, it's a pretty straightforward and simple job, but kind of first impressions, and we'll do a full series on this rifle, we'll do factory ammo testing, we'll do reloads, we'll take it past a thousand yards. If my 18 inch gun was making it to a thousand yards, this will make it no problem. So um, <clears throat> anyways, kind of first thoughts on this is I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. It's not as long as I thought that it would be. So I'm, I'm actually really happy with the length of it. Again, I'm not gonna be clearing any homes with this rifle. It's kind of gonna be a uh, precision or like more marksman or DMR pattern rifle for me or kind of style of rifle. So um, weight, honestly, these proof research barrels, they are, they're super light for what they are. And I feel like it's, as light or maybe a smidge lighter than my 18 inch criterion so that's nice uh, i just kind of have to deal with the extra two inches on it i don't know if you can see behind the light but the gas block i thought the gas block was going to be hanging a good bit outside of the handguard but it's essentially half inside the handguard and half outside the handguard and uh, it looks really really cool it's honestly in the perfect position uh, it's adjustable like we said before so the adjustment screw is up front for the and it's a uh, SLR Century 8, if we haven't mentioned it before. So the adjustment screw is up front. So like we said, first impressions are, are really, really positive. Again, we don't know how it shoots, but um, I was a little hesitant to swap the Criterion just because it absolutely shot lights freaking out like a house on fire. But again, like we said, I've had a couple proof barrels and they've all shot really well. So I'm expecting high things for this rifle, or expecting good things and good accuracy out of this rifle. But anyways, we'll wrap it up here. Be on the lookout. We're gonna, like you said, we're gonna do some ammo testing. We're gonna put the chronograph on it and kind of do the whole shebang with it. So uh, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Leave us a comment. Tell me what you think. Are you shooting an AR-10 and 6.5? What barrel length are you running? Optics? What do you take it out to? What velocities are you getting? What accuracy are you getting? Tell me about it. The nice thing about having such a small channel is I'm able to talk with y'all, and that's one thing that I really like. So the comments mean a lot to me and I essentially get back to every single one um, that's more or less open-ended if that makes sense so like I said leave us a comment subscribe leave us a like if you like the video make sure to tell your friends tell your family tell your dog tell your dog I said hi we'll see you in the next one